Hello, everyone. So I'm Eduardo Contreras. I'm from Mexico. I'm electronics. I'm an electronics engineer, and I have been uh, struggling with the chip shortage, as I think everybody here, with any kind of different uh, technology. So let's start it with manufacturing what everything is pain. Uh, <laughs> I think this is a really real image <laughs> that you can you can see. This is my day to day. I'm actually right now the CTO of my own company in Mexico. We develop hardware embedded systems. And you can see that this image is not only fictional, it's actually real. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, this is me. Um, I'm an electronics engineer. I'm the CTO of Electronic Ads. I'm a big fan of all RF topics. Uh, I love craft beer and also board games. So if you are near to me, we can talk about that, the electronics or whatever. I'm open to. <laughs> and let's talk a little bit of Electronic Cuts. Electronic Cuts is my company. Uh, I founded with three other partners seven years ago. And we are a Mexican company dedicated to do embedded systems and solutions for different areas. We have been uh, working in the open source area for, for, all, for since we started. Those are some of our products that you can find on our store or also our GitHub. Those are all uh, open source hardware certified uh, products. Right now, if you search for Mexican open source hardware certifications, you will find 32 projects, uh, which 23 of them are from us. So it's kind of, uh, we're trying to push the community down there, but yeah. <laughs> uh, the study case right now is us, right? A small company, uh, we do a lot of OSHU products. Uh, also, we do a lot of private products for companies that keep us in, in, in business. Uh, we do PCB assembly on house. We do we do have equipment for manual solder paste, pick and place for one new then V3 machine, uh, Puhui reflow oven, which was designed for LEDs, I think, but it works pretty well for each other PCBs that we do. Uh, six manual solder stations. Right now, we have 25 people contract uh, well, in, into the into the company, and it's a self-funded company, right? We have not received any uh, uh, any investment or whatever. We have been all growing the company by projects, working and selling Intindi. That was our first uh, approach to selling things internationally, and then started the web page and stuff, right? So the daily basis in electronics, in electronic ads, or I, I would say any other electronics company, is using regulators, microcontrollers, microprocessors, wireless sensors, actuators, whatever kind of components. But in this talk, I just want to focus in microcontrollers because it, it is easier to find out some replacement for some resistors, some capacitors, some regulators. There are some families out there that are compatible within pins. So let's focus on the microcontrollers, which is almost mm, br the brains of any other project, right? So this is one timeline of, of our line of thought that we have been having since 2019. 2019, COVID started. Uh, we thought in the first place that it wasn't like a big deal. We thought, okay, may maybe it's a deal one year, whatever, but it won't be that big. So. When some advisors gave us uh, the, the, the advice <laughs> of investing chips, and we said, like, oh, maybe invest, I don't know, we don't have that much money. Uh, how much time the money will be just in a shelf instead of being uh, rounding? And we were, we were wondering, OK, invest, I don't know. OK, don't worry, there are a lot of, there are plenty of chips, maybe it's not a problem. And the Atsam, the family was our main microcontroller to be used in all the boards and all the, um, almost all the solutions that we do uh, deliver in that time for, for companies. And then 2020 started and we saw that STM32 was out of stock anywhere and the prices were just uh, scaling. So we said, okay, let's invest some money. Maybe we do not uh, have that much money, but we can invest for at least, I don't know, 100 pieces, two pieces, uh, 200 pieces, etc. And they had some, uh, that's on the family started to going down in stock. Then 2021, 
uh, we, we, we needed to, ch to wait for chips to add some D21. Uh, it was impossible to get uh, these kind of chips, and we, we had to move to other microcontrollers. Then 2022, <laughs> we, we had to wait for more microcontrollers and invest in other microcontrollers. So once we have already moved to other microcontrollers, we start investing in other ones and maintain new products that we had moved to the to the to the new microcontrollers and then 2023 right now we are investing in other microcontrollers we are maintaining the new products that we did before <laughs> but right now for example the atsam d21 family is already in restock right now so we are reconsidering to get back to the previous microcontroller and if something happens we have the other version the, that's like the line of thought that we have been having uh, but manufacturing, I mean, we are talking about manufacturing while everything is Spain. First of all, manufacturing, it's related to the design. If you do one design, you need to do, to do it in a, in a better way to manufacture with the, the tools that you have. So one thing that we realize a lot of Chinese companies do is sharing footprints, right? So sharing footprints is a really common thing to do for, for example, in this board, this is the NFC copycat. Uh, right now, this is a legacy product. We do not manufacture it anymore because we release another product that changed the functionality. But the main thing that I want to point, here, point out here is that we have the microcontroller in a QFN package and also a TQFP package, right? So basically that leads us to have different uh, flavors that we can put into the, 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 the board. So we have the Atsam D2021 E18A or M, which is QFN or TechUFP, as you can see in the data sheet, right? So if you are a hardware developer, you will be familiar with this kind of uh, nomenclature, but then I want to take a look to the nomenclature. So first of all, we can see that all the flavors that we have of the microcontroller, and this 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 thing applies for any microcontroller that that's, that it's out there, right? So basically, if we change the latest numbers, we we can see that the flash memory density change, right? So what do you need to be compatible with it? Memory optimization. You need to have one SDK that allows you to have a better memory management and also better uh, yeah, uh, flash memory programming um, management. So you can move faster between, I don't know, having um, six, uh, 32 kilobytes from flash to 256, right? But also if you can see in this, in this, in this design, we have some flash memory on the SPI. So if you are able also to extract some code to the flash memory, then you will be able to do some um, changes to, to, to select one, one device with less flash memory, right? So if you start from the beginning to start uh, to, to thinking about how to change to a smaller memory, a smash, a smaller flash memory inside the chip to be more flexible in the future, that would lead to have more possibilities, right? Uh, and then one important thing that happened to us, we bought like 200 devices that were not compatible with our, with our boards. Because what, because the L variant, uh, yeah, down there. <laughs> the L variant has a pinout optimized uh, uh, for analog and PWM. And that, what does that mean? That little L changes the support of USB and also the voltages that you can see there and the reset pin and also the, the pinout for the port A, right? So this is like, once you, you, you assemble, I don't know, we, we had one, one production line that ran 50 boards and then 50 of those boards were not working. And then people in production line and also in the testing side said like, okay, this is not working and return the PCBs to, to engineers so they can, to the engineer team. So basically there's a lot of time wasted. There's a lot of money wasted there and you need to really speed up these things. So this was a real problem that we had. And as it's a struggle that I think a lot of people have had, had before in this room. So for that time, the Atsam D21X, I mean, any kind of flavor we were able to, 
integrate with our systems, but without the L variant, right? And that worked until 2021. Why? Because all the SAMD21 started to get out of stock and the stocks were fulfilled, to, I don't know, 2023 or 2024. So when you try to do one device fully compatible uh, with the, well, a new device with a new microcontroller full compatible with the latest device that you had, you need to look for one microcontroller with flexibility. And flexibility takes a lot of things. Boom, footprint, GPIO, serial communication, power efficiency, a lot of things. Also the SDKs, the voltages, compilers. I mean, this is a whole world. And how can you move faster in that way? Communities, right? The open source hardware community, as we can see here, uh, is always trying to evolve, trying to adopt new technologies. Uh, a lot of people had, had said this, but embracing new technologies is something that is really uh, richful of this community. So if you search for, I don't know, the RP2040, which is a really new microcontroller, which you can see a lot of projects that are out there already proven and there are already a lot of people doing more things, right? So let's see a little bit about these microcontrollers that we started to use uh, to the to the project, right? So we have the RP2040 multi-core circuit. Uh, it has circuit Python, so MicroPython, Arduino, and also C++, and it has also USB. So you you are covered in a lot of ways. So if you had a product that uses MicroPython before or circuit Python, like or SAMD21 products, we can move faster to the RP2040. I mean, maybe it's not um, for private products right now for us because it has some hardware books on USB that we have found or whatever, but at least for development boards, for uh, test equipment or little boards, it is just functional. ESP32, we know this chip for a long time. It has new flavors. We really need to be looking at it. S2, S3, C3 uh, with Extensa cores or uh, RISC-V cores, really cheap, really easy to integrate, and also a lot of community using it. And the last but not least, uh, the WCH family is a really cool family to be looking at. They are realis realizing, uh, realizing, no, releasing, sorry, the WCH core for Arduino. So if you have some Arduino code already, you can move faster to WCH for RISC-V cores or, or uh, 85, 51 core for a really cheap price, right? They have Bluetooth solutions, they have RISC-V solutions, whatever. And finally, we need to look for SDKs. As, as I was telling you, the microcontrollers usually gave your, their own IDE, their own compiler and whatever, but you want to move faster, right? So what I could suggest or what I really like to look forward is to having the microcontrollers compatible with these SDKs. You have Arduino, Platform.io, FreeRTO, Zephyr, that lead you to have a really easy path to, to, to modify the firmware from one platform to another. If you stick with only one, maybe it will be complicated. But once you start working, I mean, make and see, make are one really good example of them, but you actually made, you actually had to make all the blocks for, for your products. But once you have one make file and all C, a plain C program or plain C++ program, you can move to another microcontroller within a, a, a week or, or two, right? So, Far from the hardware technical sides, what are we looking when we are trying to manufacturing while well, all the chip shortage and all the fast moving or fast changing microcontrollers kind of thing uh, related to the sourcing? We need to know how to maintain the board uh, versions. So each client from our side, for example, for, for an electronic arts company, needs to be uh, aware of what version of the board is using and also how to access to the correct documentation for that board. And that's kind of the hardest part to do because a lot of people would get confused between all the different flavors of the board. Sometimes it's better to change the name and also the form factor so people don't get uh, <laughs> don't, don't get the, the, the cross ideas. Also one hard part is to maintain one SDK open to everybody, like FreeRTOS that now is owned by Amazon and I don't know what's going on there. And 
maintain the existing firmware with uh, compatibility. So a lot of people we try the same firmware that they have before with the name, the new board or the name, uh, the new development board. So that's kind of the critical part that you need to take care about, and that would be easily taken if you can have one of the previous SDKs that we have. And one really a struggle, well, one real struggle in manufacturing is the testing. Each microcontroller, each microprocessor could have a different kind of programming and testing. So it is important also to normalize those kind of things and to people who are not that into electronics, which are in the production line on the, on the testing side, they know the specific things that need to be looking at each board. So once you have that, I, I see it more like maybe the designers and, 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 the, and the programmers are in the application to the hardware, but final uh, the final stage, the users need to be easy to get to any kind of update that you have. So it, it should be like, I don't, I don't like to use uh, um, analogs to Windows or Linux, but it should be something like that. Like the user doesn't, it doesn't need to get too deep to understand what's going on to the, into the testing, into the development, into the firmware updating. And that's how we came with one supply chain specialist. So basically the supply chain specialist is always checking for new, new parts, a stock of the parts, how many of them are, are, are uh, waiting in the store or how many are waiting for being manufactured in our, our, uh, our own warehouse. And it need, uh, this position needs to be really in contact with all the design department. So you can actually change rapidly from one microcontroller to another to, to have possibilities of having a new, uh, uh, a new uh, power supply for, I don't know, any kind of board that you have or some compatibility issues, right? So if you have these two departments or those two, um, if you have only two people, one specialist in, in supply chain, another one in, in, in design, you will be able to have plenty of room to be working with different kind of possibilities on the electronic side. What, uh, what are the daily resources that a, a, a supply chain engineer should have beside all the stores and all the, I really recommend, and this is like really basic. I mean, I wish I, I would have more tools, but Octopart is, Daily basis, <laughs> find find chips also from from. Um, it is it is linked to component component search engine, so you can also see footprints, see 3D files, and everything really quickly. Uh, Ultra librarian and Snap EDA, right? Those are like really easy and quickly ways to find out chips, uh, uh, stock chips, footprints, and chips uh, schematics, so you can integrate them really, really fast. And but right now, I was telling you, like 2023, we are we are realizing realizing that there's a lot of SAMD 21s already on stock and some STM32, and there's a lot of new chips coming for for low prices. So right now, we're asking, are we gonna be back to normal? We really don't know. We are not expecting to be back to the normal. We think this stock thing will be like ups and downs, depending on the chip. So my conclusions for all these uh, four years of chip shortage should be uh, for a small company, uh, for open source hardware companies or open source hardware developers, uh, we need to adapt the quick design change. And also that gave us a big advantage before uh, versus all the big companies that cannot change designs that quickly. Uh, we need to have proven designs and how can we get proven designs? Uh, we can get from reference designs that provide uh, that manufacturers give us or we can actually look into the community for proven designs that are usually better for from my perspective than the reference designs. Um, I really like this new function on, on KiCad 7 where you can select one complete sheet and copy and paste to a new, a new design. So basically you can replicate any kind of circuit into a high critical sheet. So you can have modular thing, a modular, a modular microcontroller. And also there was this uh, uh, talk yesterday about modularizing 
parts with these Python scripts. So I really think this is really aligned to that line of thought. And also know your limitations over the production quantity, because sometimes giving too much money to companies so you can have chips uh, can get you out of business, <laughs> right? And train people to be able to write its own microcontroller translators. Sometimes when we are using, I don't know, the SDK from microchip or STM, you have something like this, no? HAL init usart, which is not exactly the same as usart initialize. But if you have one software layer that you can normalize, you will have a lot of things sorted out. That would be all for my part. <laughs> Those are my social media. So. Thank you so much. <laughs>